I absolutely love DAXlib and everything they're doing to make deploying out DAX user defined functions easier. And that's because I truly believe that DAX user defined functions are going to kind of revolutionize the way that corporations uh, hold and store their logic inside of Microsoft Power BI. All right. Why should you have to recreate the same measure every single time when you could just install a function? I do have one big problem with DAX UDFs though. And this problem exists within uh, DAX lib as well. There's no real systematic way to deploy functions from the larger and broader DAX lib library into a bunch of semantic models. And sure, you can install tabular editor three, but that still requires having a local version of tabular editor three running on your computer. Now there is Semantic Link Labs, which you can run inside of a Microsoft Fabric notebook. Uh, and Semantic Link Labs does have a way for you to deploy out user-defined functions, but these user-defined functions, you can't fetch them from the DAX lib library. So what are we to do? Well, if you're me, you think about trying to build a way to connect to DAXlib from a Fabric Notebook. That way you can use Semantic Link Labs to deploy a function. And that's exactly what I did and what I'll be walking you through in this video. But first, if you're not yet subscribed, go ahead, hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. All right. So one of the things that the good people at SQL BI put together is a DAXlib.client, which is a .NET package that allows for you to integrate DAXlib with third party tools. Now, this is actually great for us because inside of Microsoft Fabric, we have notebooks that are running on top of the Fabric Spark cluster. And that Fabric Spark cluster is running on top of a modern Linux stack that has the .NET Core CLR uh, baked right into its node. Python will not know that it's there by default. But by specifying a bridge, like what we're doing right here, uh, we can actually kind of unlock the full power of the .NET ecosystem and run c -sharp packages directly inside of a standard Python cell. So here's kind of the proof, right? Uh, when this cell runs, it returns the .NET version that's running, and it returns .NET uh, 8.0.22. So in theory, we should be able to get that package, use its componentry to access DAXlib, and then uh, take the timdol that DAXlib returns to us, use Semantic Link Labs to deploy uh, the functions out of that timdol into uh, semantic models on our workspace and do that repetitively. And I know Python to use pandas. Uh, I am by no means a developer. Luckily, I was able to, well, vibe code my way into something very complex that I do not totally understand. Uh, that said, <laughs> uh, I was able to create a Microsoft Fabric notebook capable of deploying functions fully from DAXlib into a array of semantic models. So you give it a package name out of DAXlib and it deploys it into a semantic model. So let's take a look as to how that notebook is working. And I'm gonna walk you through it quickly. And I've sped up my talking to 120% speed because no one wants to hear me ramble for that long. So here we go. Here's a quick walkthrough of that notebook and how it works. The first thing we need to do is we need to install Semantic Link Labs as we're gonna be using this to actually create the UDFs in our semantic models. Then we need to import the packages that we're going to need to make this whole thing work. Then we're gonna go, need to go down and we're gonna need to set some configuration variables. The first configuration is the name of the package that you want to install. So for example, in this case, right, maybe I want to install gold text utils. So I'll take that package name and I'll bring it over and I'll put it right here. 
The next thing is going to be the uh, models that we actually want to deploy these functions to. In this case, we're going to start with the workspace GUID, followed by then the semantic model GUID. Now you can get these by, for example, going into a semantic model right here. And then here is the group GUID and here is the semantic model GUID. Once you've done that, we then need to set a directory that we're going to actually install the daxlib client uh, dills or actually extract the daxlib client dills to. And then we also need to set a directory that we are going to export the timdl uh, once we use the daxlib C, C sharp client to extract it. In order for that to happen, you're going to need to have a lake house attached, right? And then in that lake house, we're going to be creating these file paths right here. Finally, we then need to actually set up the uh, daxlib.net package. So in this case, it's daxlib.client, and it also has some dependencies that we're going to need to install. Once you've configured these variables, we then need to configure our environment. So uh, one of the things that we need to do, and I think this is pretty unique to Fabric, is we need to uh, essentially set the Python run runtime equal to core CLR. And then uh, we also need to kind of make our directories um, and add our bin directory into the system path. So let's go ahead and do that. Then uh, I the way that this works is we have, oh, and by the way, if you get this error, uh, right here, it's because you did not run a cell. So there, we just ran that one. And now when we run this one, uh, this should run through. And here we go, environment initialized. Then we have a bunch of helper functions that we're going to use later on throughout the notebook. So the, the first helper function gets the latest package version from NuGet. The next one actually downloads the NuGet package, extracts it, and then copies all of the dill files out into the folder. Then after that, I have a method here just to uh, initialize core CLR and install the daxlib client, which is what this one's doing. Then I have this parser right here. And this parser uh, function, I think could use some work. It, it, what, it, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to break the Timdle up into the function name and the actual like function itself in a way that semantic link labs can understand. I'm trying to use indents to do that. But uh, I've run into some problems with this. Then the next one, the next function that we're using is just a directory deleter. So it essentially deletes out directories. So let's go ahead and let's create all of these functions in our environment. So there we go, run, and then let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, go out to NuGet and we're going to install all the packages or the libraries. I'm not a C-sharp guy, whatever they call them, uh, and then extract the dills right here. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Boom, boom, boom. There we are. Extracting, extracting, extracting. Then we're going to uh, initial, initialize the CLR environment and we're going to use the DAX client to go out and to get the actual Timdle behind the package that we gave it. So in this case, right, I gave it gold text utils, right? So this is the Timdle file that we're looking to bring into our lake house. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So let's hit run right here. And it'll take a second, but as you can see, uh, core was initialized, it went and got the file and it exported the Timdle. Uh, so now if we go over here to files and we hit this refresh button right here, what you'll now see is that we now have this bin section, right, with all everything that we've gotten from NuGet. And then we also now have this temp Timdle section, which has our actual Timdle. Then we'll need to go through and we'll need to parse it. So let's see if we can go ahead and we can parse all of these functions, right? So here it is. It successfully parsed three functions and then it deleted out uh, this temp directory and this one right here from the lake house. So what that means is that if we go ahead and we refresh this, we no longer have those directories. And if just for example, we go display right here, uh, df timdle, and we run this, you'll actually see the data frame that we has created here with the various function names, and then the actual expressions that uh, are going to be initialized into our semantic models. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use semantic link labs to deploy these functions to the model uh, GUID combos that we had up here, right here. So let's go ahead and let's run this to actually start Oh, and we already ran that. So actually, let's go down here and let's run this to actually deploy out our functions. So here we are running, connecting to the workspace to deploy three functions to three models. And if we give it a second, what we should see is just like that. It's deploying them and then it's connecting again and it's deploying. And then finally, it's connecting one third time 
and deploying, and then it should say finished deployments. Okay, so here's one of the semantic models that we are deploying to. Let's see if it took our function. So I'm gonna go download this file. It's going to take a hot second, and then we're going to open it up in Microsoft Power BI. So here it is right here. Let's go ahead and let's open this up in Microsoft Power BI. Do, do, do. And hopefully now we should see three working functions. So if we go over here into uh, model view right here, we should have three functions, which we do, and they shouldn't have any errors. And here they all are deployed. Okay, so let's try this one more time. And let's do this with another function in uh, Daxlib. So let's call it the Power BI or Power of BI uh, IPCS. This is a function that I personally really like, or a collection of DAX functions that I personally really like. Um, and so I would recommend you go check those out. But let's go ahead and let's update the package name. And then let's go run all. And hopefully we now should see all of these functions deployed into that semantic model. So I'll be right back once this is successfully run. Okay, and it looks like it has now uh, fully successfully run and it has uh, deployed all of these Power BI IBCS functions in. So let's go back over to this semantic model. Let's re-download it. And hopefully now we should also see all of those new Power of uh, BI functions in. So, okay. Power BI semantic model opening, it's loading, and then let's go over here any moment now into model view. And it's looking promising. We now have 13 functions and boom, there you go. Here are all of our functions. So if you enjoyed this video and if you enjoy hearing about my tech adventures, especially those like this, uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.